Um, hello, my name is Matthew, and this is Daphne. And I finished reading Radical Wordsworth by Jonathan Bate. This was a gift from Steve Donahue. And I've had a tumultuous relationship with Wordsworth. I was very put off by him years ago when I read uh, the Richard Holmes biography of Coleridge. And I didn't like the way that Wordsworth treated Coleridge, at least the way it was depicted in the Holmes biography. I felt that he used him, uh, mistreated him, uh, took advantage of all of the advice and enthusiasm and inspiration that Coleridge stirred up and stoked inside of Wordsworth. And he was, Wordsworth was happy to cast him aside but always would still use them to his advantage. That's my general recollection of the um, uh, Wordsworth's portrayal in the Coleridge biography. And I warmed up to Wordsworth through his poetry, through the years I would, would read it, and I love reading Wordsworth. I, I find his po poetry to just... Uh, have a timeless quality to it. It's uh, um, direct, it's memorable, it's extremely readable. And through his poetry, I, I um, have found a lot of respect. So reading a Wordsworth biography, I've found that he is a, an extremely difficult person to like. Um, all of the subject matter in his poetry, the idea of long, solitary walks, being one with nature, um, having the, like a, a contemplative uh, experience, uh, the side effect all, of all of that through his poetry is selfishness. It's being alone, uh, not being part of um, your community or as a society as a whole and it's so interesting how much that hidden implication in his poetry just pours out of the person um, the biography is I thought it was great uh, it was um, interesting how he paired uh, Wordsworth's uh, prelude which was an autobiographical poem, which was um, radical at the time, apparently, um, with his life. So um, Wordsworth's autobiography paralleling um, his life in uh, Jonathan Bates' biography was really well done. My initial complaint with the book, or something that immediately made me feel apprehensive, was actually Bates' depiction of Coleridge. Uh, I'm very fond of Coleridge with all of his flaws. Uh, he was an opium addict and an alcoholic and he had a lot of mental problems. Um, he was unreliable, all of those things. But he was so much more than that. And I felt like um, the way that Coleridge is depicted in this biography through the whole thing is really eager, uh, Bates is eager to uh, display his flaws and extremely reluctant um, to talk about his good qualities. And almost nowhere in the biography is it explicitly stated how much of an influence Coleridge was on Wordsworth. It does come up, like uh, I, marked, I marked the passage. Uh, this is later in Wordsworth's life, but it says, uh, in order to write at his best, Wordsworth needed not only to have Dorothy and Coleridge by his side, he also needed to feel at home. So but there's a, a partial admission to uh, Coleridge and uh, Dorothy is Wordsworth's sister, uh, how vital he was in Wordsworth's life, but the book makes it almost, the biography makes it almost seem as if uh, 
Wordsworth was just absorbing inspiration and all the people around him were these muses um, and it, it doesn't go into how much Coleridge actively helped Wordsworth coming up with ideas um, the beginning of the biography it talks about um, this Christmas party where Wordsworth was going to um, read passages from the prelude and uh, regale this on um, uh, Wordsworth's wife and sister and Coleridge and how everyone was happy to listen to the poem. That part um, is understandable but when you have a person that throughout your whole entire life you make such a strong point to have them read your poetry, Wordsworth when they were not on speaking terms, when they had arguments, when they were living far apart, Wordsworth made a point to make sure Coleridge was reading his poetry. Not because Coleridge was such a big fan, which he was, but he wanted Coleridge's input. Um, Coleridge was able to read and understand poetry unlike anyone of the of that generation um, and Coleridge certainly thought Wordsworth was a genius but Coleridge also thought everyone was a genius everywhere Coleridge went he was meeting geniuses maybe enough about Coleridge um, it goes through Wordsworth's life and sh shows um, just like his walking tours he, he walked to France somehow um, it was staggering lengths, 10 miles a day, 20 miles a day, 30 miles a day. He got involved in the French uh, Revolution at a certain when he, when he was younger, comes back to England. And as, as far as him being unlikable, uh, there's several reasons, but one is um, his worldview and his opinions on politics almost seemed to be entirely decided on what was most advantageous to him, what served uh, him the best. And that's common to be um, young, maybe not having a lot of money and having uh, liberal tendencies and then becoming older and getting um, accruing more money and having security and developing conservative tendencies. That, that's um, always been the case. Um, but Wordsworth used it to his advantage in a way that almost felt manipulative and also hypocritical. Uh, he had these long walking tours when he was young and when he was a little bit older and he had a reputation and he made the Lake District uh, in England um, a tourist location. Uh, tourists from all over the place would come to the Lake District to walk around and he frowned upon it, at least in a letter. Like, it makes mention that like must be nice to not have a job and have enough money to just go walking around, which is exactly what he did when he was younger. So, um, there's all sorts of great cameos. Um, uh, Keats pops up, uh, Lord Byron, um, it's always so great to read Eddie's story about Lord Byron uh, poking fun at Wordsworth. Um, Wordsworth was an inspiration for, for all of the romantics and Byron, um, but Byron was so much more successful. Uh, his child's herald, I think that's how you say it, um, like its first printing basically outsold everything that Wordsworth had ever put into publication. And so there's like this young upstart constantly uh, making digs and satirical little poems and having things in the paper, criticizing Wordsworth, and all the while still being more popular than him. It's funny to me. Um, and I, th I think I said Shelley. Shelley made such a great point um, as how Shelley is a continuation of Wordsworth and 
specifically mentioned um, Wordsworth's um, tendency to be selfish and how the philosophy of Wordsworth's poetry leads to selfishness if that's your only source of philosophy. Um, and I thought it was interesting, uh, after he had died, his most popular work was not the prelude, it wasn't Tintern Abbey or Lyrical Ballads or um, The Ruined Cottage or The Excursion or The Recluse. It was his guidebook that he wrote for the Lake District. So like something that would be a pamphlet, not really, but you I imagine like a pamphlet that would be in like the tourist trap um, as a guide to the Lake District. Um, and it ends beautifully. It talks about um, how huge of an impact Wordsworth had on um, the literary landscape, poetry, the development of poetry, um, its influence in America, some political uh, influences as well. Um, so overall, it, it, was, it was a great biography. It, it was enjoyable to read. I have another one, which I'll, I'll get to at some point. Um, I, as a forewarning, Wordsworth, I, I just don't think is a very likable person. So I don't know how much that would affect your opinion of his poetry. It doesn't really affect mine. Um, so I went there. Um, Radical Wordsworth by Jonathan Bate, gift from Steve Donahue. Thank you again. Um, leave a comment if you would like, and thank you for watching.